I'm going to show you how to tab books that your child might bring home from the library or from school, or maybe you found one at the thrift store that you'd really like him or her to read independently. This one Jason brought home from school. This is a literacy intervention book. And I love these little books. If you can get your hands on these books, they're just fantastic. No clutter. They're very high contrast. The pictures are great. The font size is about a 30, which is important if you have a child with low vision like I do. But the problem with these books is that they're flimsy. And if I were to give this book to Jason as is, he would just throw it. He would get very frustrated in turning any pages. He might, you know, turn to the end or the middle. He doesn't have the dexterity and the fine motor skills that he needs to be able to grab a corner and turn a page. In fact, even as adults, we, we lick our fingers and we grab a corner to turn small books like this. First, I'm going to show you how frustrating this book can be for Jason without the tabs. He hasn't seen this book yet, so this will be the first time I've given him this book. And then I will show you again how successful he can be with the tabs. Can you read this book for me? Yeah. Yeah? All right, go ahead. At the farm. At the farm. Great. Can you open it? Can you open it? Oh, uh-oh. Can you go to the first page? No, that's the last page. Put your foot down. Good job. All right. Look, there's a duck. And we've skipped four pages. Hi, Doc. Mm-hmm. Hi, Doc. Hi, Doc. Oh. Oh. Darn. Try again. Oh, that's the end. We skipped one, two, three pages. And the little I'm piglet. <laughs> At the one, two. Nice job. The end? Well, my goal with him is to get him to read independently, that I'm not having to sit down with him for every single book that he might encounter. I like when I'm doing dishes that I can sit him in a chair with a little pile of books and have him read to me while I get some cleaning done. Or if I want him off the iPad and just want some quiet time, he can sit there and go through a stack of books. And he has his favorites, which is great. Uh, but there had to be a solution for him to be able to turn those pages. The first thing I did for him was to tab with these page reinforcers. And this worked okay in the beginning, but right away you can see that there's no contrast here. He won't know the difference between picking, you know, page number four versus page number one. And they don't come off the book very easily without damaging it, so I wouldn't use anything like this to tab books that you borrowed. The other problem that I had was getting each of those tabs even. So then I used paper markers, and I used these only because I had them on hand, but they're not really worth your time to tab with these. I did like the contrast, but it has the same issue of just not holding up to the wear and tear. I then used sticky flags. These are plastic sticky flags. This is a Walmart brand, and they definitely held up to the wear and tear for a long, longer period of time. They're a little bit long, so I did trim some of these. This one is untrimmed, but my son was immediately successful in being able to turn these. So now I use these rounded tabs. They're very durable. You can write on them without them smearing or fading over time. And they're much easier to work with when you're tabbing as opposed to these Sticky Flags Walmart brand. So the first thing you're going to do is determine where you want your first tab to start. 
This page right here starts at page number one. As you can see right here, they don't have one written, but the title is on the front and then again on the inside. And you can decide whether you want to put your first tab on that first page with text, or you can add another tab and read the title for the second time. So in this case, I'm just gonna start on the cover page and take your tab. You're going to see where the adhesive stops in the middle and you just line it up, just give it a press, and then take your next color on your next page and space it far enough apart that they don't get hooked on each other when they do bend, and they will. Once you've got two tabs, fold the first page down and grab the next page. And take your next tab and line it up. And the reason why I'm holding the spine down, I was trying to line up my tabs like this. Uh, not only was I bending the pages, but they still ended up being uneven. So making sure that your spine is facing down or towards you, it's a little easier to get those lined up. So now the book is finished. It's very simple. It doesn't take very long, a little bit longer with these tabs, but when you have these pop-up dispensers, that goes a lot quicker. Sometimes I'll grab two or three of these, a little frustrating, but once you get them on, they're great. Uh, if you have a book that your child absolutely loves to read over and over, definitely use these more durable post-its. They will last a lot longer than these plastic flags. And if I had more pages to tab in the back, let's say there were two or three more pages, I would be starting at the top of the next page and I would make sure that I wouldn't use a blue tab. Since I started with blue, I might put a yellow there for contrast and make sure that the numbers that you write are very legible and easy to read. He now can focus on what he's reading and why and we can work on comprehension Instead of the frustrations of opening pages, we've removed that factor, and we can use this on any book and remove them if we need to, if we borrowed them and need to return them. It's really just a great way to give your child even more independence, and that's really key. But now you're going to see how much different of an experience that Jason will have with this book. Add the void at the farm. <coughs> Nope. <laughs> <laughs> Excuse you. <laughs> <laughs>